Hi, welcome back. This is part three of episode 149. I went and checked. So we are on episode 149. This is part three, or maybe part four. I'm not sure. Part one turned out to be a lot longer than I expected. So that might be split into two parts. I don't know. The type, the headings will be in the, in the, the headings will tell you what part this is. It's either three or four. Anyway. Oh, jeez. Um, today is now Thursday the 20th of February. Um, I had planned on filming this part yesterday, but by the time I sat down to record, um, one of the neighbours uh, above us, they um, are having some problems with their roof, or the, the, their part of the roof, so um, they had to get scaffold put up to go and investigate the problem. So that was happening yesterday. <laughs> so yeah, which meant there was basically builders outside banging away, putting up scaffold. And when they weren't banging and making a ton of noise with that, they were blasting their radio at full volume. So like I could hear it with the windows closed as if someone was playing the radio in the room. So I couldn't really record with that uh, level of noise. Anyway, I'm back today. I have my tray of spinning to share with you. I'm gonna try and not make this video too, too long, but um, but yeah, I guess let's get started. The first thing on here that I guess, I'm gonna try and grow, grow, go chronologically. So I think the first thing that I spun or finished spinning was probably this. Um, so this was some um, hobbledehoy uh, battlings in, um, I can't remember the exact name of the colorway, but it was like one of the club colorways. It was two ounces, um, so, well just over two ounces, it was 58 grams. So yeah, about two ounces of fiber. And half of the battlings were this like rainbow, and the other half was this gray. It's all actually spun into one skein in the end, but I'll probably split it into the two, into two skeins, one gray and one rainbow, when I come to knit with it eventually. So what it actually looked like, and if you watch my um, VKL vlogs, you'll have seen this in, in fibre form in the vlogs. Um, the rainbow one was actually a piece of roving or top, I guess, um, with all the colours next to each other. So if I just drafted and spun straight from the end of the, the fibre, the colours would have all blended together and gotten quite muddy. So what I actually ended up doing was I stripped the top down into all the battlings into the individual colours and then spun the colours end to end in a rainbow and then I two-plied them, I two-plied everything, it's all, it's a two-ply. Um, so I spun all of this on my Turkish spindle, it's the focus, and I started spinning this just before I left for New York, I took it with me to New York spun on it while I was there and then I finished it after I got home um, and then I plied it on my wheel wheel and the wheel that I use is a Kromsky Sonata spinning wheel um, so yeah I like as much as I enjoy spinning my singles on the drop spindle or the Turkish spindle I don't really enjoy plying on the spindles I mean I don't mind it but it's just faster to ply on the wheel so that's what I like to do um, and yeah, so I did do quite a bit of colour management when it came to the rainbow sections. I didn't waste any fibre, so... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I still have a bit of a cough. Um, I didn't waste any of the fibre, but what I did was, so I was plying from two little balls together. So say I started at the pink end. Um, and then after the pink was, I think it was like orange. So... When you're applying from the two ends, if you get to the end on one ball of the pink and it's changed to orange, but you still have pink on the other one, what I would do was I would cut the fight the singles on the first one where the pink stopped, pull out the fibre until the pink stopped on the second one, cut it there, and then kind of like did like a, like an Andy and Pine bracelet or sort of like pulled the end back up to join with the end that I'd cut and finished two plying the pink section. And then there's a little loop left at the end and I would rejoin the two orange ends together and carry it on that way. I hope that made sense. I think next time I do that I might film it so you can have a visual of how I actually do that. Um, it makes sense in my head. <laughs> 
But when I try to explain it, I'm hearing myself say the words and I'm realising it probably sounds really confusing. It's really not confusing, I just don't seem to have the words to describe it in a way that makes more sense. So I hope it made sense, and if it didn't I will show you in a video at some point. But that's basically what I ended up with. And in total, like I said, I have 58 grams and I finished and washed to go have 290 yards or 265 meters, which actually works out to be a pretty solid, it's, I'd say it's a fingering to light fingering weight, um, but in terms of yardage compared to like a commercial skein, it's pretty much on par for like a standard fingering weight. And here comes Hugo again. Hey buddy. Okay. Um, and then the next two that I spun up were these two skeins. Hey? You worried that I'm going crazy? Can you say hi? You were sleeping until I sat down to start doing this. Hey? Go, go sleep on the sofa with Derek. And Derek's on the sofa behind me so you can't actually see him but... Hey, okay, you just stay there. You just, just stay there. Okay, so the next two that I spun up with these, and the first one I did was this one, and this was from Unique um, Unique Fibres, and Unique is spelled with E-W-E -E at the beginning, which I thought was quite cute for a company name. They are UK-based. Hugo, people don't want a close-up of your bum. Come over here. A UK-based company, and she was my fibre share partner for the last fibre share package, uh, fibre share swap that I took part in. And one of the braids that she sent me was this one. And this is a 50-50 merino and baby camel, um, which is really, really soft and quite drapey. As you can see, it sort of like flops over, doesn't hold its shape that well compared to this one, which was mostly merino. This one's actually quite drapey as well, but this one's, when you feel them, you can tell, is a lot more drapey. And, um, I ended up with 101 grams, 236 yards, 216 meters. I'd say this was about a sport to DK weight. Um, I definitely went for a higher twist in the plying. Um, I was just sort of experimenting. I tend to go for less twist in my plies. Um, I don't, I don't know why. It seems to be my preference. Um, I don't mind a low twist, a low, yeah, low twists in my applied yarns. But, um, Hugo, you're being very distracting right now. Um, but I wanted to play around with some more high twist yarns and plying. So I'm really happy with how this one has turned out. And uh, yeah, I think this one will probably be for sale at some point. Um, and then the other one that I spun up, which again, I was experimenting with doing a higher twist in my spinning sniffing my face, um, was this one. And this was fibre from um, Dye Candy, which I picked up at Fibre East last year. And it's actually a gradient um, from like a light to a darker sort of tealy green blue. And I sort of spun it like a fractal. So I spun half straight and then the other half I split up into small strips and spun it that way. So this was also a two ply, these were all two plies. And this is 98 grams, I've got 280 yards and 257 meters. So it's about sport weight, this one. And so the fiber content is 40% BFL, 20% Rambouillet, 20% Tussa Silk, and 20% milk fiber, which I thought was an interesting blend. And it was spun up beautifully. Um, and again, experimenting with that higher twist in the plying. I really like how this one has turned out. Alright, Hugo, I'm going to have to put you down off the table if you don't stop moving around so much. You're going to just settle down? Yeah? Oh, and in case you're wondering what the sweater I'm wearing is my not-so-little-nugget pullover, um, which is just a basic top-down raglan um, at a fingering weight. It's really fun, it's really easy, cosy, You just I just throw it on. This one's always out and about pretty much always have it on hand to throw on um, when I get a bit cold or whatever and um, yeah it's great the, the instructions include um, uh, what's the word 
There are instructions included in the pattern on how to calculate um, for colour blocking in the sweater, which you can apply to any other sweater that you're knitting as well. And that, it, that way it's adaptable for as many or as few colours as you would like to use, or you could just do it all in a single colour. Like I said, it's a basic raglan pattern and um, yeah, I think it's always good to have a good basic sweater pattern in your arsenal. And I like this one. <laughs> Anyway, the next thing that I spun up, and I spun this mostly actually whilst I was sick recently, um, in the evenings or sometimes like the pain medication would have kicked in and I'm not necessarily feeling really unwell, but still unwell enough that I really didn't feel like knitting and I just wanted to do something where I could switch my mind off and not really have to think too much. So spinning was a really great... Um, a great thing in that in that moment when I wanted to just do something to keep my hands busy but didn't really feel like knitting um, which is a sure sign that I'm not feeling well when I don't feel like knitting um, and usually at that point I'd have had naps in the afternoon so I wasn't as tired in the evenings so I would sit and do some spinning um, sometimes Perry would go to bed and I'd just stay up spinning for a little bit longer but anyway so what I decided to spin because I wanted something that wasn't project specific, something that wasn't, um, you know, that I didn't have plans for where I wanted to like try and achieve a certain kind of yarn, um, something that I could just spin for fun without too much pressure on the finished spin. So I decided to spin my Felview Fibers advent calendar and I have the finished skeins here. I did post a picture on my Instagram as well um, of the finished skeins. So I have all 24 of them here. So what I actually ended up doing with this one, because um, they were all Rolex. If you watch my Vlogmas videos, you'll have seen the Rolex throughout December. But what I ended up doing was I spun the Rolex in order and I did 12 on one bobbin and 12 on the other bobbin. And then I chain plied them all because some were gradients. I was thinking about two plying them, but I thought actually some are gradients and I wanted to maintain the gradients and stuff like that. So I spun them all singles end to end, essentially one, one row lag into the next, into the next, rather than doing them one by one because that just felt a lot more fiddly. And then I chain plied them, paying really close attention to where one row lag ended and the next one started so I could have clean joins, essentially clean points where I could cut the finished plied yarn and have separate skeins. So. I paid very close attention to that when I was plying and so as I was winding off when I got to the end of one row lags worth of plied yarn I would cut it tie it off skein it up and then wind off the next one that way I was able to do 12 row lags on one bobbin plied onto one bobbin and then do the next 12 as well um, so that's how I spun it it made it less um, time consuming I guess also just made it less um, fiddly at a time when I wasn't really looking for something super fiddly to be working on I just wanted something fun um, and yeah I really really enjoyed spinning them so there were a few special skeins in there this one was day 24 and I can get this to focus this one was super special because there we go this one is cashmere and silk. I can't remember if there was anything else blended in it. Um, but this one was super soft and buttery to spin. Um, this one was another one that was really, that was a favorite of mine color wise. I think this is her pheasant sort of colorway. This is day eight. Um, another one that I really liked was this one, this is Peacock Tail. This is one actually had the full set of these Rolags, which was what I spun up and what inspired the spin and make along that I hosted last year. So that was quite fun to spin up. And another one that came in the advent calendar that I really liked, and this was one that I've seen on her website that I was really tempted to get before, but I've never purchased these Rolags. And now I kind of really want to. And this one I think was called Old Fishing Nets or something about fishing nets. And the inspiration photo for this is just beautiful and the Rolags perfectly capture the colours. Just the blues and some greens and a nice pop of orange in there as well, which is always fun. Um, like I said, there were a couple of 
gradient skeins in there as well. There were some really fun Christmassy coloured ones. Um, yeah, all sorts. There were some really, these two are very, are different, but they look very similar when spun up and the Rolex looked quite similar. One's just a bit darker than the other and had some different fibres in them, but these were really fun and really like those reds. Um, it was a, a fun gradient one. I'm not gonna go through each one individually just because it would take absolutely forever, but you get the idea. It was just a lot of fun to spin these and um, just what I needed at a time when I wasn't feeling particularly great. Hey Hugo. Hey, you're being very quiet now. I appreciate it. Um, then the next thing that I spun up is at the other end of this tray, and these are the unskeined uh, skeins. I haven't twisted them up yet because I still need to do the final measurements on them. So this one was from a braid of fibre that I dyed using acid dyes when I went to spend a day with Almas, who is Witchcrafty Lady. And this is the first time I dyed with acid dyes. And this braid had a lot of white left in it intentionally. And when I spin it, spun it up, it became very pastel, which was kind of what I knew would happen because if you have a lot of white left in the skein and you don't do anything to color manage the colors when you're spinning them, um, you're gonna get, that white is gonna lighten the overall colors in the, in the braid. Um, so whilst the colours in the braid were very saturated, there was reds, yellows, greens, those sorts of colours, like quite rich, and there was even some browns in there. Um, the patches of colours, it was uh, dyed in a pot on the stove, so the patches of colour were quite small. Some of them didn't even cover a full staple length of the fibre, this was on Corridale, um, which meant that I'd have, sometimes would have two or three different colours on one staple length, which again sort of blends the colours together a lot more when you're spinning them. I spun it fairly fine, I mean not super fine, um, but finer than I'd necessarily intended. It's come out more like a DK, DK weight overall, um, but I haven't done the final measurements on this one. And this is how it's turned out. Like I said, the colours were a lot darker originally, and they've just really lightened up with all that white that was left in there. But I still think it's really beautiful. And I think paired with like a darker skein, it would look really lovely. Or even on its own, I think this would be lovely for like a baby knit or um, a cowl or anything. It's, it's really soft. It's Corydale. It's really lovely. Like I said, I don't know what the final um, yardage or anything is for this one because I haven't measured it yet. Oh, going back to the mini skeins. I forgot I wanted to mention um, my overall totals. So the total uh, weight of all of the fiber in the advent calendar was about 330 grams, which was really good value, um, I think, for the work that goes into making those Rolags. And um, in total, I got 844 yards and 770 meters out of all of those little mini skeins. So enough for a pretty decent project. Now I've got to figure out what I'm going to make with them. Um, so yeah, sorry, I wanted to include that little bit of info there for you guys. Um, then the next thing I spun was this monster skein. So this, um, I think is actually the last bit of fiber that I bought at Edinburgh Yarn Festival last year. So this was a alpaca llama roving. And I can't remember the name of the company that I got it from, but I know Grace from Babbles Travelling Yarns also got fibre from this company as well. Um, and, and yeah, it was 250 grams, so a fair amount of fibre. This one is still a tiny bit damp, so I need to hang it up after I record. But I got a really nice monster skein of um, alpaca and llama fiber it was from roving so I actually ended up spinning it uh, like somewhat woolen so somewhat long draw um, so I do a supported long draw when I do do when I do do when I do a long draw spin because I find it's just more comfortable for me that way um, and yeah what it's turned out like it's lovely it's heathered it's got a nice halo to it from the alpaca and the llama in there and this one, pre-washing, 
I ended up with about 428 yards or 391 meters, so definitely a heavier yarn. Um, I'd say it's more of an Aran weight. And and yeah, this one's definitely going to go up in the shop because I don't have any plans for it. I don't know what I would turn this into. But for anyone who has like a wool allergy or a wool sensitivity and isn't sensitive to like alpaca or llama, this is always a great option. I know a friend of mine whose mum is allergic to wool but loves hand knits. And so she knits a lot of things for her out of alpaca because she can tolerate alpaca but she can't tolerate wool. Um, so yeah, so that would be going into the shop at some point once it's finished drying. <laughs> then the last thing I have is from super old, I say super old like I've been spinning for ages, it, from some of the very first fibre that I bought after I got my spinning wheel. Not the absolute first but one of the first orders of fibre that I had placed when I started spinning and that, that was from a company called Barn to Yarn in the UK and this was a bat, it was a rainbow bat that I'd gotten from her and I always thought to myself it would look beautiful like coarse bun because like then you can have a nice gradient of the colours and stuff and I didn't realise it at the time but there was um, a layer of grey fibre on the inside of the bat which actually added a lot of really fun texture and um, broke up like the rainbow a little bit which was quite nice and so that's what this has turned out so this is all coarse spun onto a cotton core like a crochet thread cotton core and I find that that's worked out pretty well for me so far using it as a core I do sometimes use like a mohair yarn as a core if I have like an inexpensive mohair um I've even used like leftovers of sock yarn or whatever other yarns around to um spin onto as a core um and this has been washed now and I just need to measure it but what I was thinking of doing with this one was doing like weaving with it on my little tapestry loom thing that I was sent again if you watch vlogmas you'll have seen it um, I haven't played with it yet because I didn't know what I wanted to do with it, but I think I might want to spin this, um, spin this, weave this onto that for like a little rainbow wall hanging because I think that'll be quite fun. Um, but yeah, so that's my plan for that one. It's not a lot. I think there's only about 47 metres in it, but I think it'll be great for weaving with. And um, I have some other coarse spun and some other fibres and stuff that I can weave with it that I think would be quite fun. So that's my plan for this one. And that's pretty much it. That's where I'm at with spinning. I haven't done any spinning the last few days. I've just been busy prepping and getting my, you know, kind of getting back on track after being sick for so long. Um, today, as much as I've got work and stuff I want to get on with, today I've got to get a lot of prep done for Leila's birthday. Um, I, I went and did the final shop this morning to pick up all the last bits and pieces food wise that we need for for Saturday because I didn't want to do that tomorrow since I'm going to have Layla with me and it would have been just too much. I have other things I need to do tomorrow. Uh, Layla and I need to make jelly and um, I need to bake her cakes later today. I'll probably do that this evening after she's gone to bed. Um, I'm going to make the cakes today and then wrap them in cling film and that should keep them fresh until Saturday and I'm going to <coughs> I'm going to decorate it tomorrow night after she's gone to bed so it's all ready and done for Saturday um, and then she managed to get some strawberries at the supermarket that look half decent it's, the thing is she's obsessed with strawberries but unfortunately it's not really strawberry season so I was really concerned that I wasn't going to be able to get some good strawberries um, so hopefully they taste good they smelled good and I kind of do always do the smell test like if they smell sweet they're probably going to be okay um anyway so fingers crossed the strawberries come out taste good um and then what else do i need to do i've got some oh i need to make some food stuff and just make sure we have everything that we're going to need so um so yeah i think i'm going to end it here i'm planning on vlogging this weekend so you'll see me again very soon and i will catch up with you guys soon all right take care and i'll see you guys very shortly bye